Many health and fitness trackers give a VO2 max score, but do you ever wonder how accurate they are? I've been wearing an Apple Watch, Garmin Watch, Whoop, and an Ultra Human Ring for a while now, and each one gives me a VO2 max score, and I'd like to know which one is the most accurate. Two weeks ago, I went to Loughborough University for a VO2 max test. Come on. Come on, keep pushing, you got it. I took my four fitness trackers with me to compare their VO2 max scores with the actual lab result. During my visit, I also had a lactate threshold test. So in this video, I'll also be comparing the results of that test with the lactate threshold scores on my Garmin watch. And while we're here doing all of this stuff, then we might as well look at how accurate the heart rate zones are on the Apple Watch, Garmin and Whoop. Let's start with the lactate threshold test and heart rate zones. Whatever you need to do to get your, your head in the... <laughs> Head in the space to get going. I love um, how you're used to working with athletes and yeah. now it's just like me, like, oh! The lactate threshold test measures the point at which lactate starts to rise in the body. Lactate or lactic acid is produced during high effort exercise as a source of energy. And you may be familiar with the feeling of lactic acid. It's that burning feeling in our muscles when we're exercising hard. Not many fitness trackers give a lactic threshold number but some Garmin watches do. Number one done. 30 seconds just where I take a sample and then we'll get you running again slightly faster. At the start of the test, I had a blood sample taken from my earlobe to measure my resting lactate levels. I'm wearing a mask, which is attached to a super clever machine. When you're taking deep breaths, our volume data, so the air data, you can see responding there. The blue dots are your oxygen uptake and the red dots are your CO2 that's being produced. And the test works like this. It's four minute blocks of exercise, starting at a steady pace. Then every four minutes, the speed of the treadmill increases slightly. Throughout each four minute block, I rate my effort level between six and 20. Another one ticked off. Whereabouts are you on the scales? 14. 14, cool. Good stuff. Keep with it now, because this is obviously gonna be Moving through the gears, let's say, probably about halfway through the test now. And at the end of each block, my lactic levels are tested again. And a little bit faster this time. The lactate threshold test isn't a maximum effort test, like the VO2 max test, but it's still pretty challenging. <laughs> because I'll be working to the point Ten where my seconds. lactate builds up and oh, I'll feel well that burn. Well Instead of running to failure, the test stops when my body is producing more lactate than it can clear. Stopping in three, two, one. Well done. Ooh. This test gives a number of results. However, it's the LT2 that I'm interested in because that's the one that the Garmin watch predicts. Ooh. Well done. Ooh. So let's see how accurate it is. I tested my Garmin eight days before the lab test and it predicted my lactate threshold was 556 minute kilometers, which is a speed of 10.1 kilometers an hour with a heart rate of 167 beats per minute. That's the speed and the heart rate it predicts where my body is producing more lactate than it can clear. So how does that compare to the lab result? My lab test gave me a lactic threshold of six minute kilometers, which is a speed of 10 kilometers an hour and a heart rate of 163 beats per minute. And I'm impressed, the Garmin has done a pretty good job. The blue dots here are your oxygen uptake and the red dots are your CO2 that's been produced. So you can kind of see as we work, move up and through, sort of each one of those stages, we're going slightly higher, slightly higher, slightly higher. You can also kind of notice as well, the gaps get smaller. So you see the ratio between them get smaller towards the end yeah. compared to the earlier ones. The bigger the gap between them, the more aerobic you are. So more sort of fats that you end up using as a fuel. As they start getting closer together and like you'll see hopefully in the max test that they'll be almost crossing over or over the other one. And that's where you're almost predominantly using carbohydrate as a fuel. So still all the way through your test, you're still relatively aerobic all the way through. So that's a really good sign and that would be more of a profile that we'd see from sort of our longer distance athletes. If you want to see the whole lactate threshold test and the VO2 max test in their entirety, it also includes Stephen explaining everything, you can watch those videos on my Treatments and Therapies channel. I had a body composition assessment that day too, which you can also watch a video about.
The results of this test also gave me accurate heart rate zones based on how my body responds to exercise. So although fitness and health trackers give heart rate zones, again, they're estimates based on our resting heart rate and maximum heart rate. These are the default heart rate zones my Apple Watch, Garmin and Whoop give me, which you can see, they're all quite different. And these are the heart rate zones from the lab results, which are personalized to me. So I've entered these into my fitness trackers and that will allow me to hopefully get better results with my training. As you can see, going to a sports lab and getting this stuff done, it takes some time and costs a bit of money. So I'm grateful to have Shocks sponsor this video, allowing me to do all this stuff and share it with you. I want to improve my VO2 max, so I've started running again. I used to run a lot, but I stopped because I wanted to focus on weight training. But now I'm running again, I realize how much I love it. I'm outside in the fresh air and nature. When I go running, I wear these funky little headphones. They're the Shox Open Fit 2 Plus. These are open ear, so they hook around the ear and sit just on top of the ear opening, meaning I can listen to music or a podcast and still hear what's going on around me. That's not only great for safety when running or cycling outside, but it also means I can still hear the birds singing and the nature around me, which makes my runs so much more enjoyable. Each one of these weighs just 9.4 grams. They're water resistant, so perfect for sweaty workouts. And the Dolby Audio makes music sound incredible. My outer space playlist when walking in nature is next level. They come in this handy little case, which has wireless charging, and the earphones have 11 hours of battery, while the case holds 48 hours of battery. So if like me, you're keen to get out in the fresh air and exercise, and want to listen to something, but still be able to hear your surroundings, you might want to try the Shox Open Fit 2 Plus. I've left a link to them in the description. Next up is the VO2 max test where I compare the lab results to my fitness trackers. We're gonna start moving in three, two, one. VO2 max is the maximum amount of oxygen the body can take in and use during exercise. And I recently found out VO2 max is associated with how long we're likely to live. A high VO2 max indicates a longer life and a low VO2 max indicates a shorter life which is pretty scary. So I was keen and a bit reluctant to find out my actual score. So we'll get yourself up to pace, try and get a nice strong rhythm. Okay, so it's gonna go up in three, two, one. The VO2 max test is much shorter, but much more intense, and it will push me to my maximum effort. Good job. The reason health and fitness trackers can only give an estimated VO2 max is a device on our wrist can't measure oxygen consumption. For that, we need a mask and a super duper machine to measure the oxygen and carbon dioxide from our breath. But just because it's an estimate doesn't mean it can't be accurate. For the test, I ran at a steady pace. Then each minute, the gradient increases by 1% until I can't run anymore. Steady at this pace all the way through. So challenging but shouldn't be maxing out and obviously it's the gradient that's going to kind of put that extra stress into the legs and push you up to max. While I'm running and the test is getting increasingly harder, I'll talk about how to get the most accurate VO2 max score on your fitness device. There are four things. Five seconds we get that first rise in gradient. So you'll start to feel that first move up there. There you go, that's up to 2% on that gradient now. Make sure your weight is up to date because your VO2 max takes into account your body weight. And there we go, up to 3%, well done. Wear your device as much as possible so it can collect enough data about you and make a good estimate. This is especially important during exercise so it can track your heart rate. Oh no. Go on, you got it. Tracking outdoor activities using GPS helps the device give a more accurate VO2 score I think it's because it can track your moving speed and compare it with your heart rate. So if you only ever exercise indoors on a stationary piece of equipment, it could be that your VO2 max on your device isn't as accurate as it could be. Doing a great job, that's another minute. Well done, really ticked it off nicely, come on. 
If your device is compatible, then consider wearing a heart rate strap, which will give more accurate data compared to the wrist sensors. I wear a heart rate strap with my Garmin, so I wonder, does that mean my VO2 max on my Garmin will be more accurate? Let's find out. 10 seconds so we get our next rising gradient. You got it, keep it going. Good job. Come on, see if you can get good stuff. Well done, really well pushed. My test lasted just over four minutes. It's weird when I stop because it's easy to think I could have gone on for longer. Another 30 seconds, even just another 10 seconds. <sighs> Thing is, it's never going to get any easier, is it? <laughs> but the reality is, this was just going to keep getting steeper and harder, and my body was already working at its top limit, hence the pain, erratic breathing, and inappropriate noises. Was I even close to flatline? I wasn't entirely sure that I'd hit my limit during the test. But looking at the graph after the test, Stephen explains why it looks like I was at my limit or very close to it. If you're doing that, that tends to be, you know, you're, you're right up near your max. Yeah. But... So let's compare my VO2 max from the lab test to my devices. My Garmin estimates my VO2 max at 43. My Apple Watch says 40.1. Whoop says 38. And my Ultra Human Ring says 46. My VO2 max from the lab test was 38.7. So the Whoop was the closest, which I'm pleasantly surprised about because it's the device that I've been wearing for the shortest amount of time. A VO2 max of 37.8 puts me in the excellent category, which is reassuring as hopefully that will have a positive effect on my lifespan and health span. I'm interested to know, do you know your actual VO2 max score and how does it compare with your fitness trackers? I'd love to hear from you in the comments. YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video next, so maybe give that a watch.